-hmm. breakers with their, you know, the, the freedom to just have an idea yeah. and then spontaneously do it. <laughs> like I was, I don't think I was ever taught that, so I respect it. And I'm like, wow, like mm. it is, it is incredible to see. Mm -hmm. It is incredible to see, and I love that these these dance types are being respected as well. Because you know, growing up, I feel like we were we were told, you know, it's the ballets and stuff like that that are you know, the respectable genres of dance and whatever, mm. but no, like all types, all types of, of dance are just as important as the next. So but having said that, mm -hmm. and here's a spicy question for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think ballets are not in the Olympics? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, that's a good question. It's so true. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official .com. <laughs> Street Culture TV. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. What you do DIY. Right. Fearless. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central, London, as central as you need to be, choose to be. You know the coup, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, don't be a bunch of melts. Uh, big shout out to all the sharers and carers. Not to mention everyone's got the Television app free download, iPhone, Android, for all your sporting arts, the competitive side of your life that we all live as a lifestyle. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Um, inside the house, we have a beautiful thing. She is more than just a presenter. She is handling Sunday's one extra. She's a part of team spirit, the main players within the cricket. And well, we could talk a lot more deeper about that. <laughs> but, but currently, offset of the Red Bull BC1, uh, the breaking federation is in safe hands. Fee Mac inside the place. <laughs> Mike, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> How are you? My guy, I'm good, man. Thank you so much for having me. This is lit. Yeah, yeah, you were just, yeah, we were just, uh, the DIY has been yes. uh, impressing you, right? Very, very impressive. Like, that's why you're 501 <laughs> yeah. episodes in. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> Do the math. Do the math. Go ahead, go ahead. How have you been? I've been really good, you know, really prioritizing rest and just like trying to make up the most the last bits of summer that we have left. Yeah, the last bits of summer. Yeah. How, how easy, this is actually as much a personal question, self-goals, how easy is it for you to rest? Um, It's quite hard now, but I always said that whatever it is I do, I need to prioritise that because I feel like without rest, like you don't recharge and you need to be your best when you show up to certain things. Even like this, I've got to show up being my mm -hmm. best, you know? It's really important, really, really important. That's why I'm always like asking even like some of my DJ friends, like, have you slept? Are you all right? Like, are you taking time out for yourself? Because it's, it's really important. Mm. Yeah. It is, really is. Yeah. And, and furthermore, like, you can always be, you know, when you've got all these different things that you're mm -hmm. doing, moving from there to there to there to there. Yeah. You know, the, the highs are like taking you, driving you. It's almost like really hard to chill. Right. Right. And I need to chill. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm running on like... E mm. and I have no energy, but I have to get it from somewhere, mm. and it's not really authentic. So, like, I always like to show up my as my authentic self and well rested. That way, like, it's just me. Mm. You know what I mean, uh, authentic self. Let's get into that because the yeah. first time I met you, which wasn't so long ago, no, it was all. it was just so the energy. Your energy is infectious. It oh, was beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, you, like you. so welcoming. So you know, um, honest. Like the the way that we were talking, especially from a from a Red Bull you know, event point of view, right. you, it was, it was enough green, but with enough energy and angst and wanting to really get your hands dirty yeah, in it. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it was a really beautiful conversation. And furthermore, yeah. I think it translated onto mm -hmm. the stage. Right. Oh, that's <laughs> so lovely, man. <laughs> true, <laughs> true, true. Something like that is a big deal. Do you know what I mean? Like it is, you know, these breakers, who you said earlier, you know, they put their life and soul into everything they do. And mm. then this is the moment where they have to shine and you got to respect that. you got to make sure like it's an environment where they feel they can do that. Mm. And as, as a host, you know, myself and Swifty, he was, he was great. Man. Oh, he really, in it. He, oh, he's on. just honestly the best. Yeah. And so like, just, just creating that, that welcoming safe environment is so important for these, these breakers just mm. to, you know, bring it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. no, we know you're not, you're not, we're not, New to the the dancing world and certainly not breaking. Yeah. But your your face was so lit, so lit. <laughs> watching them. Like, yeah. Wow. 
crazy. Mad, mad. It's crazy what the body can do. Mm. And after like, I'm sure these lot have been training for years and years, but just just the, the control that they have and the mm. techniques, crazy. Like, mm. what? I just still can't believe it. We had, we had a little chat before, but do you, do, yeah. do, do you know, so we're kind of paraphrasing here with some of what we've already talked about, but do you think there is the, there is the longevity aspect of like some of these guys, that they're, they're, they're of, a, of an age where they've honed their 10,000 hours. Yeah. You know, they're, you know, the next time around, they're going to be a bit more older. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a generation behind them that can keep up with that level and standard? I would hope there is, you know. Yeah. I would really, really hope there is. And I feel like there is as well. Like, breaking is such an important community and in such a, an important part of hip-hop in itself. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I feel like there would always be a next generation. As long as they're being nurtured, as long as, you know, they're being welcomed. Mm -hmm. To be like, yeah, you can be a part of this. Mm. You know what I mean? It is important to, to show them love too. Then absolutely, why not? Mm, for sure. You know I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. I do know what you mean. And the welcoming sign is also open to... Every, I mean, one extra as a whole is, you know, it's the, the epitome of, of, of culture yeah. and the music, right? You know, it's, it's <laughs> What was a secondary station back in the day really is priority C. Yeah, you know? like, our facts. <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know I mean? it's really important. And that's why even with the, the, the radio aspect I really wanted to like like really bring it with the dance as well because dance is an important part of music mm. and even though radio isn't visual it kind of is becoming visual now but it is important to to highlight the different parts of you know black culture whether it be music fashion mm. dance these all are main yeah. you know main ingredients for the way the culture is now and so like there can't be that without no. That, you know. No, they can't be. So. It's a complete and utter reverberance of w of what's going on on the street. Mm -hmm. and, and dance, whether it's breaking or any other form yeah. of dancing, is so relevant. You know what I mean? Facts. Like this soldier boy back in the day. Oh you know my I mean? like, God, you couldn't get away from him. No. <laughs> he no. was everywhere. Yeah, cameo candy if you want to go further yeah. back. Yeah. You know what I mean? like, yeah. It's always been present. Yes. And there's always been, if there's not an associative drug to the, to the music, it's yeah. an associative dance, isn't yeah. it? That is so funny you say that because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, right? It's true. And we see it on TikTok now. Yeah. Like the guys on TikTok, they're making up new dances every day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, it's nice that it's inclusive. Like that's what dance is about. Just an expression. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what about what, you? What, are you? Are me? You, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm rock steady. I'm okay. rock steady. I'm, well, in terms of in terms of TikTok, <laughs> I think about the, <laughs> I stick to beatboxing okay. and looking free. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, no, yeah, I love I that. Love that. Really. But I do, you know, I massively value it as being part of the DNA of, mm -hmm. of I don't know anything with a competitive edge is, is definitely up there, isn't it? Right, right. What's your uh, What's your timeline of you know dancing yourself? Do you have, have you have you been a part of the dance genre over? over I years? have, you know. So I really started quite young. So at the age of four, my mum like put me into a dance school, Deborah Day. At the time, it was in East London. It was just something. Hello, nice. East London crew. Come Big on, up East London. <laughs> Come on. Got was, safe hands over here, come West, on, don't worry. Go on. <laughs> yeah. And it was just a lovely environment, especially for, you know, the area that I grew up in, mm. really high crime weights, et cetera, et cetera. So mm. dance was kind of our escape. And it was just a way for me to broaden my horizons, mm. you know, go into different, like, cities and travel into different places. Just allow me to, to see, like, the world, mm -hmm. even though it was in the UK. but And just to see how far dance can possibly take me. I, I feel like the time where I knew that dance could be a career was when I was on um, the West End musical Billy Elliot. So that was when I was about like 11. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah. Billy Elliot, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was one of the little valley girls back that's, in the day though. That's, dude, that is seismic in terms of, you know, a youngster. Billy Elliot is one of those, um, one of those shows that, Youngsters int get introduced to through. dance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's like, true. That's like the en that's the entry gate to to, to what could be a a, 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 a prosperous right. career. Right. So that was like that was major. But at the time, I was really young. I was in year six, so I don't think I understood like the mm. gravity of what I was really doing. Because I'd you know I'd have to leave school during the day, go to rehearsals, do the show, come back at like eleven p.m., get ready for school the next day. Mm. Like it was just. It was mm. really hectic, but mm. it was a great experience. Um, but I would say like a lot of my dance career was really formal. Um, so as in, I, it was in what as formal is in? As in like 
you know, doing structured. The, yeah, really structured. So we did ballet, tap, modern. I did street. I did um, contemporary stuff like that. But you know, I'd have to do the exams, do the grading and mm. stuff like that. Went to the Royal Ballet School. So it's been really like, do you know what I mean? I know. Exactly. I have a secret. My my, my partner, she's she's yeah. into ballet. Is she? So, so, yeah. Oh my god, I, I love it. I know exactly all the terms. I know exactly the terms, all of it. Pirouette. And I and I, I know how <laughs> important it is. You have to be very very. It's postures, everything. And yes. If you got yes. a bone out of place, you're out. You're Bye. finished. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, they'll be like, make sure your arms are like this. Like, yeah, yeah. it was really a lot of discipline. That's what dance taught me as well. <laughs> Whether it be rehearsals or repeating the same move like 500 times, like that discipline mm. is always stuck with me, mm. I would say. And I, that's what I appreciate the most about dance. And so when I see like the breakers and, you know, all stars, I'm like, there, there's a level of respect I have for mm. these dancers because I know the blood, the sweat, the tears, the hours that goes into mm. rehearsing these moves and, you know, just, to make sure that they're the best of the best when they perform it. So yeah, yeah. I rate that. Also, I think the free form of it all, like the, the, the genres of dance you're talking about there are mm. really regimented. Like it's it's to spec and what you're saying is right. That the, yeah. that the, with that restriction comes that discipline. Facts. That when you see those people like breakers mm -hmm. with their you know, the, the freedom to just have an idea yeah. and then spontaneously do it. <laughs> like I was I don't think I was ever taught that. So I respect it. And I'm like, wow, like mm. It is, it is incredible to see. Mm -hmm. It is incredible to see. And I love that these these dance types are being respected as well. Because, you know, growing up, I feel like we were we were told, you know, it's the ballets and stuff like that that are, you know, the respectable genres of dance and whatever. Mm. But no, like all types, all types of, of dance are just as important as the next. So but Having said that, and mm -hmm. here's a spicy question for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think ballets are not in the Olympics? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, that's a good question. It's the truth. Oh, my God. Mm. How can I even answer that? Is it political? Is it a thing that people just don't... Is I it don't even the, know. What is that? Wow, that is actually a really... I've never thought of that, actually. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe the institution itself is a little... I don't know. I actually don't know. Isn't it crazy to think that after all this time, you know, and... Maybe there's a level of wokeness to, to skateboarding and, right. and breaking and all that being in the Olympics. Yeah. But what about what about that? Yeah. That's that's the elephant in the room of like. Oh, that is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I don't even have an answer oh, to that. Well, comment below, you know what to do. Yeah. yeah. Ballet heads out there. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see these. You know what street culture is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I tell you, man. Stranger things have happened. Uh -huh. You know, next thing. I mean, you. <laughs> There's there, there was a period in skateboarding, to my um, understanding, you see, I wasn't born that time, but I do recall it in, in documentaries, where they were doing some crazy yo-yo-esque style uh, right. tricks on skateboarding. You never know, there might just be a breaker just rolling out with a tutu or something. Who knows? <laughs> that would be, that'd be crazy. <laughs> street culture. <laughs> street culture vultures. There, there we go. <laughs> there it is. Um, uh, one extra. Let, let's talk the history here. So how did how did you get into... Because Sunday, that's, that's a prime time yeah, slot right there. Yeah, yeah, no. I love radio, man. And like growing up, I'm pretty sure, you, you know, you grew up like this as well. Like just always hearing music. And I feel mm. like my dad like played a massive part in introducing me to all music types. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Some of my favourite albums and I remember being at uni and that was when I just took the time out to discover other genres of music so I'd be on SoundCloud and you know finding these different producers and I had a passion for music at the time and I really wanted to share that I also knew quite a lot of artists on campus and I was like what if I just create a platform yeah just on campus we have this radio station it might not be the biggest but I just want to show these people love mm -hmm. and so that's literally how where my career started and I would share my stuff on Mixcloud um, and then the station manager at Westside, Sonny, he found some of my work and was like, oh, would you like to like learn more about the art of radio? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm chatting a bunch of rubbish on my on my <laughs> uni station and playing music that I like. And it wasn't until I went to Westside that I was like, oh my God, like there's actually an art to like being a presenter and just, you know, finding your style and all these things that I, I would never have known if it wasn't for that. Well, let's break that do down. I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do know exactly what you mean. Break that down, because, you know, obviously there is a theory behind the, the presenting yeah. side of things, particularly on radio. Like, right. I'm, I'm, there's probably always been live stream when you've been on radio, but, yes. but surely, like, you've also got to have the voice and the cadence to mm. understand that there might be people just listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's and the theory behind that? I mean, I, I feel like you definitely need to... 
it's so easy starting off radio to sound like a news reader because mm. you want to make sure you're saying the right thing, the right time, the right tone, all mm. these things. You're overthinking it. But what I was taught, I feel like one of the most important things, it's like having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Like you and me conversing. Mm. It's like me conversing with the listeners at the home. Best. Yeah, isn't it? It sounds like you're chatting to a friend or yeah. they're chatting to you. Yeah, and yeah. that That's what causes that engagement. Mm. And so just always remembering that and um, yeah, being warm, being friendly. I don't take myself too seriously, so I I joke about myself. No, all you the time flow, but you got flow, <laughs> and you know what? They, you know, in, in a Sunday evening with this program in the UK called "Come Dine with Me." Oh. Sunday morning we have an experience in in England called "Come Down with Me." <laughs> like Sunday morning, everybody is just absolutely battered yes. for the weekend. Oh my god! You, I mean, it makes it really easy for you to have, be a bit more playful. Yeah, it? and just have fun, man. Like I've realised that's that's what I want my shows to have. Like. You know, we're not doing open heart surgery. This is no. just radio. No. It is important, nevertheless, yeah. but it is just radio and just, you know, having fun with it. I think there's nothing wrong with that, man. It's just, mm. it's a nice way just to, to chat to the people. Because even when I listen to One Extra at Home, I'm like, oh my God, this feels like I'm listening to one of my friends and they're just mm. playing music that I really like. Mm. And it's just an easy listen. Does so. that feel that, does that, does that rapport translate within the studio as well? Definitely, definitely. Because yeah. when we get the texts of, you know, people going on holiday and they're like, oh my God, I'm loving these tunes or they're just talking about their days with you. It's like, people are actually mm. listening to me. Mm, 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 <laughs> and it's so easy to forget when you're in a room with just you and the producer. But yeah, no, people are really listening. So it's nice. I like it. Good producer carries the, oh. the weight of a wicked show, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I never really knew that until I went to the BBC. I'm like, these people literally plan the whole show yeah. and I just have to execute it. Yeah, yeah. Like, they have the ideas. Do you know what I mean? Just little things that sometimes you'd forget as a presenter. They're there to, like, you know, pick you up yeah. and make sure you're doing your job well. It's so, so important. It's so key, uh -huh. isn't it? Uh-huh. Absolutely. So, it's so rare. I love I mean, them, man. Do you... um? Another one, a little spicy <laughs> nugget <laughs> of joy it, here. It. <laughs> so the, the trend, uh -huh. the trend in radio is uh, you become a DJ fully fledged, then you go and do clubs. Right. You know, you, you mop up the, the club world. Yeah. <laughs> Take over. <laughs> Take over. Mm -hmm. You know, perpetuated by the likes of uh, Annie Mack and yes. saying low, big up to that, Come of course, on, you, know, you know, historically r defined. Yeah. Do you find like you want to kind of step into those arenas I, I tried at university but I realized I don't have the passion to to DJ mm -hmm. do you know what I mean and at first I thought oh my god that's so weird like you could be sometimes I even still have those thoughts like oh my god the gigs I'll be doing and stuff like that but I feel like if you don't have the passion for it it will show and so I don't like yeah. forcing things yeah, yeah yeah do you know what I mean you're way more the presenter yeah and the, yeah and I knew that about myself early on um, because yeah, mad respect to DJs. Even some of my friends who DJs, I'm like, you guys are so talented. You know, the fact that they think on a spot to know what song goes into what, mm. to control the crowd, that is mm. a massive deal. Like, mm. not not everyone can do that. And I can control the crowds in other ways, you know, hosting. MC? I love that. MC in, yeah. yeah. I could, I could, you know what I mean? I'd yeah. love to try. That'd be sick if you had like a, a one extra DJ and you, one extra MC. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be just like. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah, it would be. It would be. I don't think it's ever happened before, neither. Um, Has it? Maybe in the past. But I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe it did. Oh, what are they called? Oh, man. I forget their names. But yeah, sort yeah, of vibe. Yeah. It has happened before. Yeah. And I forget how long One Extra's been going. 20 years. 21 years this 21 year. 21 years. 21 years. Crazy. I know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing, man. Do you remember yeah. the originals? Do you remember the first DJs? Um... I they remember, came in last year. Did they? What for a kind of reunited? Yeah. 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 Um Ace has been there since the beginning. Ace, Ace and Viz. Ace Viz, yeah. Um Excalibur. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Excalibur did the UK pop thing and wow. Dynamite MC did the drum and bass and then Bailey went and did the drum and bass. Oh wow. Yeah, sort of. Wow. Mr. Jam. Mr. Jam, yeah, yeah. can't forget Mr. Jam mm. in it. Yeah, there's been a lot of like legends who've mm came through yeah yeah literally laid that foundation yeah, yeah so that we're here today you know yeah i think i think for those early days it's kind of a thankless task as well mm. like just getting it getting it done done yeah. yeah and they did get it done like sometimes i hear the stories um one of the first one of the producers who's been there from the beginning crispin uh, who will tell me the oh, big up stories. crispin yeah, yeah, yeah. Crispin, shout out to crispin yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the stories <laughs> seem crazy like you know back in the day as you mentioned just getting it done and so like there's just been 
that, that level of authenticity, you mm. know what I mean? And even Nick, who's been there for quite a long time, Nick Bright, and just, yeah, no, nah, it's, it's, it's crazy. And it's a privilege to be around these people and learn from them as mm. well. Because 21 years, that's, that's sick. It's hard. It's a long time, man. Yeah. And like you say, being around that kind of calibre makes you realise, even even the that that side of like one extra as a whole, mm. when you see the, the graph that kind of uh -huh. went to create the foundations, uh -huh. reapplying that to our own yeah. careers is something, isn't it? Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. But I'm I'm so grateful like that these people have been so welcoming to us as well, the new generation and just you know, like th the fact that they're my colleagues, sometimes mm. I just can't believe that. Mm. Like growing up, listening to them and then, you know, working alongside them it is a privilege, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. take that for granted. A big shout out to Rodri as well. Rodri, my boy. Yeah. Rodri. Oh, you know Rodri? Know Rodri. That's my producer. Just get the fuck out of here. He is my producer every Sundays. Oh my shit. How do you know Rodri? <laughs> I'm not going to put Rodri on blast, but uh, we we grew up with each other back wow. in the day. In, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a career. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That is, yeah. Did not expect that. Yeah. At all. At I love all. it. I mean, <laughs> Rod, nah, Rodri's he's a he's a, he's a saint. He's a yeah, saint. Yeah, he's so good at what he good does peoples. as well. Like, yeah. Just just great. Just great. I That's crazy. Lie. He's your producer. He's my producer. See? Literally my producer. Big dog. Isn't it? The way the world works. Yeah. You know I mean, I love it. <laughs> 100%. Uh, love it. Big up, Rodri. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, do you recognize like the talent within the field? Like the, you just mentioned, your friends, people that are there all the time. Who who's it? Who are you rating in in Ooh. in the in the in the team that you're like? Yeah, I'm definitely tuning in, checking out. Oh, do you know? Oh, I love um, Nadia J. She does the breakfast show. Mm. I love everyone first and foremost. Well, that's political, politically correct answer to say. There but you go. Remy expressing views that are not entirely <laughs> of the day, whatever they say. <laughs> Remy Bergs, mm. mate, mm. she is so hard. I remember. Many, many years ago, seen her tweet on Twitter, just shooting a shot, like, I want to be a radio presenter. Da -da -da -da. Just help me out, guys. And just to see from that tweet where she's gone mm. and her trajectory. So her show on One Extra was the first show I ever covered on One Extra. And it's eventually the show that I have now because she mm -hmm. had the weekend breakfast. And to see her go from weekend breakfast to drive time, like, the girl, she is just, she deserves every good thing that comes to her, man. She's, you know, like, one of those pure soul people. Mm -hmm. And she genuinely has so much energy in real life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, so how do you have so much energy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she, that's just who she is. She's, like, larger than life. And I love people like that Such good people. Well. Yeah, yeah isn't it? Oh, people. it's just so good. And yeah. you can tell, like, it comes from a good place and, like, she's got a good heart. Like America Foster, when I see her go mm. at it, I'm just like, yo, I rate it. I mm. rate it. Like, how can you not be happy for someone that's exactly. happy? Exactly. There we go. Yeah, and I mean. she's happy all the time. Like, always got a bright smile on her face. So, yeah, man, love Remy. Love her to death. What kind of music were you listening to as, as a, as Growing a up, young one, yeah? Wow. So much, you know. So, because I'm from Cameroon, um, Francophone, African country. Beautiful. Grew up with Makosa, which is like the... Um, traditional kind of music that's played in Cameroon. Grew up, grew up with like R&B, which was my my dad introduced me to. And just all types of music. Like my dad would play reggae, like he's got Frank Sinatra CDs, the Bee Gees, like all types of music. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. you were schooled on the, on the old school. Like proper school, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, man. And I could see like it's translation to my brothers as well because they listen to all types of music too. Your so. brother's older or younger? Younger. You know what, it's, 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 it, you know, it, we are in this time of, you know, every genre of music is so transient. Yeah. It's so come and go. And, and I don't really, like, I don't listen to albums anymore or anything that, you know, unless it's really grabbing Really? Me. Yeah, I mean, I, I listen to, like, the Gun, a Guns N' Roses album or, okay. or Tribe Called Quest. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The ones yeah. that I know that, yeah, The Streets. Ten out of ten. Yeah, 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 Like, yeah. I can go straight into uh -huh, that from uh -huh. A to see you know wow but these are rare ca cases because nowadays that people don't really mm -mm. orbit to they don't go to albums like i that, agree i agree which is so unfortunate because an album is like i feel like certain well really good albums some of my favorite albums is like storytelling yeah it's just like an inside into like this person's life or I don't know, maybe their interpretation of someone else's life. And it's just like a story and you follow it through. Like Kendrick. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very rich, isn't it? Yes. With and info. it's like, he took his time with that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He took how many years out to really put this solid body of work out. And it's so sad that albums yeah. aren't really 
I think anymore. What was the last album you listened to? In last full? album I listened to. Last album I listened to in full. Nems. Okay. The latest Nems. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was good. Um, but like I said, I always go back. Like, mm. you talk about storytelling. I mean, you know, Boy in a Corner Ooh. was definitely a... You don't. I don't think that was even translated as a storytelling, but mm-hmm. actually epitomised everything that right. the London was at the time. At the time, in it, and to be able to like capture that so perfectly in a body of work, that's why I stood the test of time. Really, yeah. Hack Baker. You know Hack Baker? No, I don't. He's cold. Is he? Yeah, he's good. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link. Yeah. What kind of music does he do? It's kind of like. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of a bit widey, kind of guitar-y. Okay. Plan B meets, uh, yeah, it's that kind of it. Okay, you know. nice. Yeah, yeah check yeah, him out, man. Yeah, it's all like, oh, it's... wild. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, the dog's kind of vibes. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he just goes around and smacks it. You'll, I think yeah. you'll rate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll recognise some of the tunes he's done. You right. know, you're just some of the, on some of the remixes and things such. Yeah, like. the name sounds very familiar. Mm-hmm. That does sound very familiar. Yeah, I'm always well. open to listen to new yeah. music anyway, like... That's what that's what got me into radio in the first place. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then there's the discovery. sports side of things, though, isn't there? There is. Like you, you're the, the dynamics. You kept the dynamism here. I mean, mm. do you know what? I feel like my <laughs> philosophy, especially in my career, I'm like, let me just try it out. See mm. if I like it. If I don't mm. like it, at least I've tried. Do you get what I'm saying? Sticking with that. So, how does that? How, <laughs> you that is a philosophy that doesn't always yield to everybody. Yes. Like you can't always, you know. No, it's true. <laughs> so how come you can? What happened there? I don't is know. <laughs> some sort of thing it is. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Growing up, do you know what? My parents always, they always made me believe I could do anything. Mm. And I've got to big them up for that. Like even with dance, like they would always tell me, like you're the best, like you're great and stuff like that. And I've just always kept that in my mind. And like growing up, it's so easy to forget that. You know, with life and its mm. pressures and overthinking, imposter syndrome, mm. you kind of lose that 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 childlike confidence and mm. fearlessness. I never want to lose that, you know. Bless you, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, because it's so easy to. And like, who says because we're older, we can't try mm. new things? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Who made that rule up? Yeah. Like, it shouldn't exist. Like, it shouldn't be a thing at all. And so I've always tried to, like, maintain that that attitude when it comes to my career. Femac told you, see? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, you know, if we can help someone out because, yeah, man, like life does get hard. Let's not, yeah. let's not joke. Like adulthood is very difficult, and yeah. especially the times that we're in. But if you can try out something new, if the opportunity comes, mm. go for it. Do you think it? Because like, that push forward mm-hmm. often is the release of all of that tension yeah, of what happens know. in life. I mean, we can't control everything, mm-hmm. but when you get offered an opportunity, there is a, often a double back of like, well... Yeah. But that should be where you push forward, exactly. isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And especially, you know, that moment of, it's like, well, what, am I qualified to do this? Oh, um, yeah, those ones are the worst. You know though. what I mean? Like, <laughs> who says I should be doing this anyway? Mm-hmm. Like, what 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 gives me the, the audacity to mm-hmm. even try to do this? Mm-hmm. Like, but I just have to push those thoughts away because they become so destructive, you know? mm and um, yeah, the worst thing is just to go down a downward spiral yeah. when such a great opportunity has come about. Mm. So I just go for it and I just try not to like think about those thoughts. All right, on that, on that note, before we get into the sports side, it, yeah. the, the, what's the most happiest imposter syndrome moment you've ever had interviewing anybody? Where, oh where my you're, God. Yeah. <laughs> where you're like, oh my God, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I would probably say, I would say Akon, you know, at the Huge. MOBO Awards. That's huge. I was like, I literally used to listen to you growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother and I would make choreography to your music. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't think he would he was planned to be there anyway. So I just thought, oh my God, like, this That's is a huge. legend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Straight yeah. Up. Yeah. Built cities. Yes, in Senegal Wells back home. And kills it. Yes. Yes. Incredible. What an incredible That's human, moment. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. He's always got a good heart. Mm. And yeah, no, that that was that was a great moment, man. I would forever cherish that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what life's about, right? It is. What about yourself? I mean, you've done how many episodes of <laughs> this? I'm pretty sure you've 500. Come across. But my big boss career took me, uh, I performed with Prince and Pharrell. Wow. Yeah, that was, wait. It was good. Wait. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, I've done a lot of stuff in my That's big levels. boss career. Yeah, yeah. Oh Toured the world gosh. with that shit. Yeah. That's incredible. And mm. like, during those moments, you're like, Oh my god! Like, what's going through your head? How do you overcome like those those thoughts? 
Just been really good at beatboxing. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just your truth, it, just <laughs> mission it. Just get it. If you yeah. get, you know get it, got it, go. It always comes with it's. It's always the. It's always the behind the story that's yeah. the best bit. Like the, the the how did I get there in the first place? Exactly. That, you know what I mean. That's the best shit, right? Yeah. Like with you with Akon, I'm pretty sure that the. the, the Behind the scenes story is way more fun than the actual <laughs> you know, the panic. The panic is yeah. the mic working. Am I gonna be right? Yeah, no, honestly. Like And then he happens to walk what by questions yeah. am I asking him? That's running through my head. Like, what's he doing here? Yeah. All these things. And then, you know, the camera's on and you just got Ding. do it, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just like that. You know, no one ever tells you, enjoy it. Just gotta get on with it, man. Get on with it. Yeah, and just trust that it will just turn out to be the way it's meant to be. Do you think that's the biggest trick of presenting is that that remaining present? Do you think there's a level of yeah. presency that you've got to keep? Absolutely. Because um, it is like, your mind is running wild. It's running crazy. But then, you know, when you're when you're chatting with someone, I don't like to really call it, in, I mean, it is an interview, but it is kind of like an informal conversation. Yeah. They might say something that could lead to another question that you haven't planned and you have to be aware. Yeah. You have to be in that moment, actually listening to what they're saying in yeah. order to capture those little gems. Yeah. And I feel like that's where some of the best parts of the, the, the interview come about. Well, it's where you've said, it, I think it's called recall, isn't it? Where you Is that what's called? So, I think so, yeah. Never when you think, to, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. yeah. Big up David Ross, he, he knows the deal. Hey, right, come on. Um, and, but yeah, there is that, isn't it? Yeah. It's, the, it's almost like you, uh, you've got to follow, follow, follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then multitask. Hold it. Yeah, it's a lot of multitasking, yeah. you know. It but you is. feel like a don once you go. Like, and then you're like, oh, that was a good interview. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I spoke to Akon. Yeah. What the hell? So, oh, yeah. man. But also helps when you're a fan as well. Yeah. I mean, very important. Yeah. Very important. Like, I remember on my show at Westside Radio, it obviously, it's a community station. So we have a lot of creative control. And I'd always make sure I invite people who I'm a fan of. Mm. I've listened to their music. I'm like, nah, this is a sick artist. Mm. Like, they've got potential. It just makes everything easier. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You can connect on, on on that musical level as well. But even more getting to know the person behind the music, mm. which is equally or even more just as important. 100%. Um, team spirit. Because we were going somewhere with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, team spirit. <laughs> Tell us a story. Yeah, so my my way into sport presenting, I started at London Lions. So I did like a gig there. I did two, yeah, two gigs there. And it was fun. I was like, oh my God, this is fun. <laughs> um, my brother, he's a footballer. So I've always been around sports. My other brother does basketball. Oh, um, so yeah, just that environment. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Everyone's friendly. Everyone's just excited for a game. And then the opportunity came for me to do the 100. So the London Spirit team, which I was the main host for at the Lord's Cricket Ground. That was crazy as well because- So when was that? What, 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 what was the So it was like, it's like a tournament. Literally the whole month of August, it literally just ended this week. So it's been this year that this happened? Yeah. The hunter has been going on for like three, I think this is like the fourth year now. Yeah. But yeah, like August is the month where it takes place. And it was mad. The last time I was at the Lord's Cricket Ground, I was literally working behind the bar there in my early, in my early uni days. And so to be there, but like as a main host of an event, I was like, this is so trippy. Like this is, this is mad, this is crazy. That is crazy. I love it when things like that happen. I do too, I can't lie. It's very rare, actually, to be fair, that you actually give it any sort of consideration. Mm -hmm. It's just that it almost becomes when things start really working out. It's yeah. Just, of course it happens. It's accepted. Right. But you really got to really take stock. Yeah. And, and... I was just there like, oh my gosh. Like, I didn't even know what the stadium looked like because when you were working behind the bar, you can't leave. Do you know what I mean? You mm. have to stay there. So to, to be there... Amongst the crowd of people, with the fans, engaging with them. Like, that was lots of fun. Mm. That was a really wholesome, man. And it was another thing that pushed me. I can't lie. I was a little bit scared. I was like, oh, can I do this? Like, there's like, what, tens of thousands of people there. And I have to entertain them. I have to make sure, like, they're excited for this game. Yeah. That's a, a, lot, of, a lot of work. Yeah. But, um, but also it's dialogue, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the experience of uh -huh. being on any platform, radio especially. Exactly. You know what I mean, you just... just Yarn your way through it. That's it. Silence. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And just be confident. Mm. I feel like confidence is definitely key. Even though you are probably scared inside and you're like, oh, yeah. 
You can't show that. No, you can't show mm, it. at all. Do you think it ever? Sh- I don't. Th- I don't know if it would ever show. Ooh. I mean, it certainly didn't show it on the Red Bull at all. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, come on. Like. <laughs> there are a lot of things going on in my ear, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Willie, really, the ears in my ears. Oh man, the ears are the worst. Oh my! They're like, come on, you got go quicker, quicker, guys. Yeah, you know, wrap it up. Let's go yeah. move to the next thing. Yeah, yeah, we ain't got yeah. time left. And yeah. you're just there, like, yeah, come on, everyone, make yeah. some noise. Yeah. 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 You can't let it show. It. Yeah, that's right. Just yeah. keep it flowing. Yeah. Yeah, Swifty, be up, Swifty again. That's my oh. guy. Street Culture TV. He, he's Incredible. he's also very much a he's, he's an encyclopedia mm, of breaking. Yes, isn't he? that's why I thought like I was in safe hands. Yeah. That man knows his stuff, and he's like with he's like with the breakers. You know, some people like when they're hosting, they feel like they're above what they're doing, but mm. like he's really like down with the underground. Yeah. Like he knows his stuff. Yeah. I respect that man. Yeah. I really do. He throws down as well. He does, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a video of him in Tokyo where he threw down in the middle of uh, of the of the under the transit system. You're joking! Like, everyone was just like, "Whoa!" Because <laughs> they're really conservative over there. Yeah, right? isn't it? And then you just got safety. You just, <laughs> he just <laughs> drops, oh and we'd all had a drink. To be fair, <laughs> that's so funny. I need to see this. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. Big up, Swifty. What's the future, darling? Tell us the future. Oh. I would say the future's looking very bright. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I don't know what what's next, but um, uh, I'm a believer, so I always know that you know, like God, He's got me. Damn right. Do you know what I mean? Like wherever I go, like my steps are covered. As long as I'm I'm doing what I need to do, and you know, being a good person, you know, because I feel like those elements are really important as well. Just mm. to just to do good, to be a good person, be kind. I feel like that that makes everything a lot easier. Yeah. You're easier to work with, do you know what I mean? And be kind because you are a kind person, not because yeah, yeah. you want to advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, no, the future's definitely bright. Definitely would love to do, you know, more TV stuff, more hosting. Like, listen, out I'm there, down out whatever, there, isn't out it? There, sprinkles of out there. There we go. Come on. Yes. yes. Into the E-frog. <laughs> there that. we go. Yes. It's done. It's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being here. <laughs> it's been fun. I love this conversation. Honestly, yeah, Keller. Yeah, we do more. Yeah, we yeah. do more. Bringing it to you, Rough, Rugged, and Raw Killer Keller podcast. You remember, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right, don't talk to anyone. No, I wouldn't. Thank you, Fee. Thank you. Peace. Wow, you are so-